Alrighty, how is everyone doing? It is getting to the end of our week. It's our last webinar of the week. So let's get into things in just a second. Um, I'm so ready for the upcoming week, guys. You guys know I probably haven't slept much if you've been following me on social media since I've been out here in Thailand. Just got a whopping 13 hours of sleep last night. Holy cow, I feel so refreshed and rejuvenated. Very much needed. So I am excited to get into the markets, guys. We have one more trade. This, this trade we're probably going to hold over the weekend, most likely. Um, I'd like to see it move into some profit before the end of the week. And we'll hold it over the weekend, but we'll get into this trade, why we place it, all that good stuff in just a moment. Let's first just start off by looking at the economic calendar. To end off the week, there is nothing crazy that should affect our trade, okay? There is only in about, what, let's see here, in about five and a half hours, we've got Mr. Mario Draghi speaking for on the uh, ECB. Um, he's probably gonna have some commentary to say about the resignations in the pound, um, I honestly haven't had much time to look into, um, exactly what it was. It was someone, I'll have to look into it. I'll have to look into it more guys, but someone that is very prominent in the banking system or related to the prime minister or some sort of, it wasn't the actual prime minister, but one of the financial people related to, to the prime minister, maybe one of you guys can help me out in the chat. If you guys know who it is, um, resigned. So we saw the pound drop like crazy yesterday. We saw Euro drop a little bit too, but we aren't worried about that. We're just worried about the trades that we are in. We are going to talk about the trade yesterday that, so we've, we've taken five trades this week. This is now our sixth trade so far, but we've only had five trades that have closed and done. And four of them have, we've, we've locked in profits on and one of them we lost 1% on yesterday. So let's jump into everything. Um, I think first, real quick, guys, I want to talk about the dollar and give you guys my standpoint on the dollar. And we're seeing exactly what I wanted to happen happen, which is great. Um, I told you guys yesterday on the daily candle, this is the daily chart for the dollar index. I told you guys that we could see maybe one last push on the dollar. We might, I said we could go back up to the highs. We could have potentially broken and gone a little bit higher. Or we could have just seen... Um, what happened happened. We saw a retest of this zone, retest of these highs or this area. You can see it probably a little bit clearer if we're looking at it on the one hour. Okay. So yesterday we saw the dollar index spike up, back up towards this area and then fall back down. Um, there is a little bit of concern with this, with this little bit of a bull flag. We have this rise and then this like descending channel moving lower. So we have kind of this resistance in the support. So we definitely are gonna watch what happens when price gets down to this area. Um, we'll see. Now, one thing guys that I would love for you guys, Bre okay, Brexit minister resigned, Dominic Rab. Okay, perfect, Rebecca, thank you. Um, one thing guys that I would recommend all you guys have on your charts, and I just have not had, I, I, I for some reason I thought trading view was messed up. I have it on my MetaTrader 4 charts, but I, I couldn't figure out how to remove the historical data for some reason. I, I, I don't know. Maybe I was just tripping and it wasn't, and it was showing it, but you guys probably noticed now on all of my charts, now on trading view, we have this purple line cutting through price and we have three orange lines below price and we have three orange lines above price. Okay. If you do not know what these are, these are called pivot points. There's all sorts of pivot, pivot points, okay? There's daily pivot points, weekly pivot points, monthly pivot points. They're all calculated the same way based on their time frames, or, well, different, different ways, but based on their time frames. And this purple line right here, I, I just choose these colors, guys. This is what I've always had mine as. Um, well, in TradingView, I actually have them different colors because you can change the resistant ones and the support ones, but in or on MetaTrader 4, but in TradingView, you can't change it. Anyways, the middle one, guys, this is called the daily pivot point. Um, and that is calculated, um, I believe, by taking the high and the low and the close and dividing it by three. 
All right. And that tells you the price where like the average price, that's kind of like the pivot, the daily pivot, the daily average of price and what I'm going to, there's an entire lesson guys in the trainings on daily pivot points, but why these are important is they help you with gauging, um, significant levels of support or resistance that you might not see otherwise. Um, and then they also definitely help you gauge the trend, right? If the daily pivot point for, you know, yesterday was lower than it was today. So that means that today's daily pivot point is higher than it was yesterday. Then that usually means we're trending upwards or vice versa. Okay. Um, now the way you put this onto your chart, if you guys are using trading view is you just come right up here into indicators and you type pivot points and, uh, you click on daily pivot point standard. So I'll very quickly click on it or I'll delete mine very quickly. Okay, no. This is what what you'll see. Yours won't look as clean as this right off the bat, guys. Okay, it's gonna show a it's gonna show a bunch of lines. It's gonna show something like this. Okay, it's gonna show a bunch of lines, and it's also gonna show the labels, and it's gonna look something like that. Okay, you need to kind of clean it up a little bit. Um, now you don't necessarily have to remove the historical ones. Like maybe you like seeing it like that. Who knows? But I don't. Um, so I remove historical date, historical points. I don't know how I missed this box. For some reason, I could only ever get it to, so you try to type zero here and it, the less, the lowest it shows you is two. So that's why I didn't have it. You can't go below then. You can't go one. It changes it to two automatically. So for some reason, I just was overlooking this box. And because I thought trading, trading view has been doing so many updates this year. If you guys have noticed, like I just thought that they had removed this option. I completely just did not see it, but you can see there's daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly. I prefer the daily because generally I'm going to be using these pivot points for um, some type of um, intraday trading or intraweek trading. Okay. But it's, it's okay to see the weekly pivot points. And then I personally don't like to see S4 and S5 right, right away because I'm usually we aren't going to see that heavy of moves. The only time you're ever going to see price go all the way down to S4 or all the way down to S5 or all the way up to R4, or all the way up to R5, which is guys, S stands for support, R stands for resistance. Okay. Super simple. Um, is when there's like massive moves in the markets like there was yesterday on pound yen. Okay. Um, or a lot of pound pairs. Anyways, though, um, I also remove my labels. So, so just know that the, the first one below the pivot point is S1, then S2, and then S3. First one above is R1, and then R2 and R3. So I remove my labels just to clean it up. And this is just how I like mine to be set up, guys. If you want to copy me, that's totally fine. If you want to model what I'm doing, that is totally cool. I do not mind, okay? This is just what I use. I've had these custom colors for literally years inside of MetaTrader 4 with my pivot points. So... I'm so happy that I'm able to get them back on trading view. Um, guys, there was literally a time and a place guys, when I used to trade on my phone and I would go to daily effects every single day and then manually, you know, you, you can't really put in like custom indicators or you can't put this type of stuff on your phone. And I would literally draw a horizontal line that was about the size of the pivot point in the S1, S2 and S3 in every single day. That's how dedicated I was to trading guys. Every single day I would go in and put in the number, look at exactly at 5 PM Eastern time when the markets closed, I would go in and look when the new old daily candle and the new daily candle opened. And I would go in and put the exact price of all the pivot points on all the different pairs I was trading guys. I would spend like an hour every single, more than an hour probably adjusting each of the horizontal lines real quickly. Let me plug in my, my phone too. So that's how dedicated you have to be to trading sometimes. Let me just grab my charger. Hold up, guys. Let me just plug in my computer. Hopefully it reaches. Oh, just barely. That is one thing about Thailand is even though I'm in this super, super nice condo apartment area place and doing an Airbnb and there's no, I mean, there's outlets, but it's not, not nearly as many as I would like. Um, but anyways, guys. Yeah. So daily pivot points are, are very useful. Okay. In, in identifying key levels of support or resistance. So let me, let me just very quickly, I'm not, this isn't going to be an entire lesson on pivot points, but let me just give you like, show you just something just so this makes sense. Okay. And why 
pivot points like are just there as added confluence. It's, I never rely just on pivot points. It's kind of like a trend line or a support or resistance because you notice right here where we have S1, where there's the support area, you notice how it's also confluent with the daily lows from yesterday. And you see how R1 right here, I don't know if you guys can see that very, very thin. There's a line right there, guys, that right above this black line, there's a thin orange line depending on, hopefully you're on your computers because if you're on your phone and you're, you, you probably can barely see this. But that is confluent with this resistance area. And then you see R2 right here, how it's confluent with the highs, right? Okay, so all I'm trying to show you guys is that like S1, I mean, uh, sorry, pivot points just in general, they are useful to help like put more uh, emphasis on your support and resistance and help you see that on the chart. Um, and then there, there's calculations. This is all quantitative data, guys. So S1, S2, S3, all of these are figured out different ways, okay? Um, and I'm not gonna get into all the different formulas, but if you want, just like literally Google, how is the daily pivot point calculated? And it'll show you pivot point. You know, it, the daily pivot point is the high, the low, and the close divided by three. Um, I believe S1 is the hot, the pivot point plus the high divided by two, and R1 is the pivot point plus the low divided by two. So it's, I mean, I, I don't want to overwhelm you guys, but yeah, it's, there, there's a specific way to calculate daily pivot points, and these change every single day. Okay, keep that in mind. So anyways, getting into just the gist of what I, my idea is and where I'm expecting the dollar to go, guys, I do think that this could be it for the dollar. I think that this could be the top for the dollar. If there is going to be one more push, then there's going to be one more push. That's why with our AUD USD trade that we just placed, we have a nice sized 85 pip stop loss. You know, it's not like a 20 pip stop loss because I'm not super 100% confident that the dollar is done coming down. It may want to push up higher one more time before moving lower. So we'll definitely see what happens. Um, but from a technical perspective, we can definitely see that the bulls, the buyers, the dollar bulls are really running out of, of juice, right? A lot of that had to do with this big, strong, bearish engulfing candle, and then the fact that the past two daily candles, I mean, they did have a wick to the upside, they also had a wick to the downside, but it's just showing a little bit of exhaustion coming from the buyers, and the sellers could be really moving in, into um, the markets, right? We have this trend line cutting through price, which is also the neckline of our inverted head and shoulders. So we'll see what happens, right? But um, I am pretty sure we're going to see something like this happen. Price move back down to this support area, maybe even lower, maybe come all the way back down here. We'll evaluate, we'll definitely evaluate what happens in this area, the 93.2 zone, which you guys know the 100.50 and the 93.2 have been major, major areas of um, interest for us. Okay. I'm also actually going to delete this box right now, guys, because this box was actually from the weekend. You guys know this was, I placed that on Sunday. And we were originally bullish on the dollar, right? Before we saw the fake out, not even the fake out, actually before we saw that it was a fake out, um, you know, we, I, I assumed that it was a, um, that it was, that it was going to be a fake out. And that's what we did see happen. Okay. So anyways, that's looking good. Gold is moving upwards um, pretty nicely. It's continuing to move up. You guys know that one of our trades this week, we bought gold at 1203 all the way down here with a nice tight stop loss of about 60 pips and it's shot all the way up. We took our profits right around this area though. I wasn't a big fan of how volatile the moves were and looking in hindsight, it's okay, right? It's been pretty choppy. It has moved up a little bit, but not a ton. Um, I will in moving into next week, have a bullish outlook on gold. Most likely, right? Things can change in the next, the markets aren't open for quite another 24 hours, a little bit less than that, about 20, uh, about 19 or 18 hours left that, that the markets are open for the week. So we'll definitely see what happens. But um, overall, I would like to see some bullish moves on this. Uh, Euro USD, same thing with Euro USD, the opposite of the dollar index. We did see a little bit of a, on yesterday on the one hour, we did see a little bit of weakness on Euro USD. We did see it fall pretty nicely and then quickly recover and actually make some new highs. So we are trending upwards. Now I do recognize this. I'll go ahead and put this trend line out. 
it's not perfect by any means. Kind of like this area, you know, I mean, this trend line can be drawn numerous ways, guys, like right there. You know, I might prefer it to be this specific trend line to be something like that, just to watch, just to see what happens. I don't think we're going to break this trend line. I think that we're going to continue moving up higher with Euro USD as the dollar falls. Um, that's the most logical scenario, in my opinion, especially just with that huge fake out on the downside where we trapped a lot of sellers in the markets with this sell. You guys know we caught this 100 pips at the beginning of the week or 90 pips to be exact, like 90 pip drop at the beginning of the week. And then I told you guys on the daily webinars that this was most likely a fake out, which it was, and we came back into price. So this is going to prove to be a pretty major level now. The, the 113 area is going to prove to be pretty major. And then also look at the weekly candle on Euro USD, guys. Look at that weekly candle. Holy guacamole. Look at that. Look at that. Super nice exhaustion candle, right? So lots of conviction, I believe, going into next week to look for um, buys on Euro USD. Okay. Which is also, you know, why we're buying AUD USD. Okay. I'm just I just bought AUD USD over Euro USD because remember. We have ECB, Mr. Draghi speaking, right? Probably going to move Euro, Euro USD a little bit, and I'm not willing to take that risk. I'd rather take the risk on a, on a pair that has a positive correlation, but isn't going to be as fluent, isn't going to be as impacted as heavily as the Euro may, okay? Um, let's look at USD Swiss Franc. USD Swiss Franc, um, we're going to be looking for some sells going into next week, guys. Um, weekly candle. Right, we talked about this yesterday. Weekly candle opposite of Euro USD, super super nice exhaustion candle after a nine week one two three four five six seven eight after an eight week rally. This wasn't a rally this week, but it was a, still a neutral week. So we can say seven out of the past eight weeks have been a rally for uh, USD Swiss franc, and then we've got this major level right here, guys. Major major supply zone for USD Swiss franc stretching all the way back. Right, you guys see this major supply area. Okay. So we put this on the chart and boom, we see that supply zone. I'll actually even stretch this back farther. Hold up. Let's do this. Look at this. Look at this guys. You see what I mean? Look at that. It just keeps going. It just doesn't, doesn't stop. Major. Does it keep going? No. Okay. Look at that. Look at that zone. Okay. So we're talking on the weekly. This is some major, major resistance that this pair is, that this or supply zone that this pair is seeing. Okay. So that would be very confluent to be looking for Euro USD buys, USD Swiss franc sells. Okay. I'm calling it right now. I mean, I've already called it earlier this week, guys. USD Swiss or Euro USD over the coming weeks, probably moving into 2019, something like that. Okay. Easy. Something like that. All right, that's what I'm calling. Probably even make, just to even put on paper, even more so than these things being recorded, um, is probably I'll publish a public um, chart on my TradingView account so everybody can see and I can brag about it in the future, okay? Pivot points are similar to SMA's emails. Absolutely, Kevin. Sorry to just backtrack, guys. I want to answer uh, Kevin's question. Yes, they're just used as a, to help identify Lots of things, support and resistance, identify key, key levels of a trend uh, to help confirm what, um, what direction we're in a trend. So yeah, pivot, pivot points are great, guys. And, and I don't want to sound hypocritical, guys, because you guys have heard me say, uh, like, RSI statistics, you know, indicators are garbage. Guys, remember, when I talk about that, I'm talking about the people that rely on indicators to take their trades where they don't look at price action. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? You guys have probably seen those charts where, okay, this, to be fair, this chart is a little cluttered right now, but it's price action clutter, right? It's like highs and lows. Okay. I'd have a, I have a lot of stuff on here that I need to actually remove. I don't even know why half of this stuff is on here. Like this doesn't need to be here. This doesn't need to be here. I don't know where these came in at, to be quite honest, guys. I mean, I know why that's there, but that was weird. I don't know why a couple of those things. I mean, like this doesn't need to be here anymore. I really liked this, but I'll remove it. This doesn't need to be here. 
This doesn't need to be here. It's like it's like deleting old pictures in your phone, guys. It's like you know, just getting rid of them. It's like getting rid of like the useless pictures. Um, let me see what else doesn't need to be here. I mean, everything else. I mean, okay, this we can disregard for right now. This we can disregard for right now. I mean, this is this is definitely relevant um, to the upside. That's also relevant to the upside, the 23.6% retracement level. So we'll see what happens, right? But um, once we do confirm that this is a reversal, right, we're going to delete this, and then we're going to put this on here. We're going we're gonna to follow the new swing. Right now we're going to be looking at what are retracement levels to the upside, right? Rather than before where we had this down here and following the previous uptrend, right? Because we were in a downtrend and now I believe that the trend is going to change. It's not confirmed yet though, right? We're still in it. We're still technically, quote unquote, technically in a downtrend on EURUSD. We have yet to break the uptrend, but we're looking at buying the bottom right now, okay? Which is the key, right? We want to buy at the lows, sell at the highs. That's, that's the key with Forex, right? So it's obviously easier said than done. But we can see, right, 61.8% retracement level. We're finding a big bounce off right now. So this will stay relevant for at least right now. You know what, actually? Yeah, it'll, it'll stay relevant for right now. Next week, when we get our weekly candle that makes a nice bullish candle on EURUSD and we're moving back up again, then I'll go ahead and fib this move out. But for right now, until we get that all, you know, there's still possibility of, of downside on this pair. So we'll, we'll keep it that way, okay? Um, so, okay, USA says, Frank, we got to... Uh, pound dollar, same thing with USC Swiss franc, right? When when we get the down, when we start the downtrend, we'll go ahead and fib out some moves. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just remove that for right now. I'm just gonna remove. What do we got right here? What's this on the four hour? Okay, I'm just gonna remove this stuff. Clean up the charts. It's clean up day a little bit, okay? Just looking at major resistance zone right now. We haven't traded this pair in a while, so not interested. All right, pound pairs, guys, not interested in trading pound pairs. We got absolutely finessed yesterday on pound yen. And this is why we use good risk management and a stop loss on every single effing trade, no matter what, guys, okay? Because the technicals were there. We went into some really nice profits, right? So on the one hour, boom, we took a buy on GJ right here yesterday. Went into about 50 pips of profit. Real nice bull flag going on. Really nice recovery fake out from these lows where price recovered, showing a strong presence of buyers in the markets. Everything was screaming to the upside for pound yen. Everything was great. And then we find out that some dude decides to freaking resign. All right. Sucks. It is what it is. All right. We get stopped out. Pound dollar in three hours or pound yen in three hours decides to drop 300 pips. All right. Sucks. But where was our stop loss, guys? Our stop loss was like right around this area. We did a nice, oh, actually, no, I'm sorry. Our stop loss is a little bit lower. Our stop loss was right here. We risked 1% on our account. We didn't get crazy. We more importantly used the stop loss because guys, 300 pips, imagine even with like a, what, 300 pips with a 0.1 lot size. That's still like, if you, I mean, you're, you're blowing accounts, guys. I mean, I mean, you're, most people aren't even doing 0.1, right? They'll, they'll take a trade blindly and they'll put in, throw a lot or half a lot or whatever, right? That's a blown account right there for most people, okay? So important, stay away from pound pairs, guys. I'm actually unchecking pound yet, not interested at all in trading, okay? Um, dollar yen, uh, we're gonna be looking for sells into next week. Um, we took a sell early. I, I wish we would have held the trade. I mean, shoulda, coulda, woulda, right? If, if you beat yourself up on every single trade, shoulda, coulda, woulda held the trade then you're going to go crazy, right? But you guys know we, we took a trade up here, um, I think right around this area. It was at 114. I know that. 114 was the price we sold at. I know that because it was exactly 114, right? And, and we took it based off the triple top. Based off the triple top, nice e exhaustion of buyers in this area. It dropped a little bit and we closed, right? And it was okay. You know, it looked like it was going to hang in this area and then it kept going and going and going. Um, or I think we got more than, I don't remember exactly where we closed. I think we closed. Yeah, I think we did close on this, this drop right here. Still, still locked in some nice profits, still did a little bit of discretionary trading on that end. 
Um, obviously hindsight is always 2020. It's like, oh man, we should have held that trade. Uh, I think our take profit was at like 112.80, right down in this area. It was where this trend line is. So looks like it's going to go down to that zone. Um, don't chase a trade, guys. Like I'm not interested in getting into it right now. You know, there's there's better. There's not great risk to reward with taking this trade right now. Um, but it is. It's it's going to move lower. I'm I'm like pretty sure it's going to move lower. Okay. Big big same thing. You see this major resistance area, major major resistance zone. Um, yeah. I mean, just pretty clear of, of why. I mean, b between the bias of of the dollar and euro usd and all that you know that that should bring uh, uj down as well okay aud usd so we're back in this trade guys um and what i mean back in this trade you guys know we've been bullish on aud usd since down here okay hindsight is 2020 yeah we could have should have would have held a trade all the way up here i get it blah 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 guys doesn't matter okay there's, there's literally new opportunities every single day in the market don't fret on that all right so I did call it perfectly. Uh, if you guys go th scroll through whatever social media, telegram, wherever I called it, I called this as the spring. I said that this was our accumulation based off the Wyckoff method um, where we see orders accumulate. We see that spring to break support, to grab that liquidity that the market makers and banks need to move price up higher. And then we're seeing price move up higher. Okay. But again, I'm not really worried about these, you know, this, this couple little, this little move right here. I'm more worried about this bigger move, guys. This is what I've got my eyes on, and I love this pair. I love this pair, guys, because it follows price action so well. I would recommend, if you guys are brand new to trading and you're listening to this right now, find one or two pairs, learn them, okay? Like, learn them, let them become your baby, and just, like, like nurture them and just learn them every single way, learn the way, learn their patterns, everything, okay? AUD USD is in, is one of those pairs I really like, um, and I'm you know I'll, I will attest to all this, guys. You guys remember this move? Some some of you guys that have been in positive traders since late last year, you remember this uptrend? And I called it. I called it. We caught money on this downtrend too. I said we measured we measured these two moves out, right, guys? We measured these two moves. We said okay, this move right here, up all the way up was about a 750 pip move. Boom. We counted this. Didn't quite get 750 pips up, got about 650 pips up, but it had a very similar pattern to what had happened right here, as was happening right here. And I said, once we broke this downtrend, we were going to go down. Little did we know, looking in hindsight, that this was going to go all the way down here and become extremely oversold. But we are, we're looking at breaking this long-term downtrend of all of 2018. Look, 2018 highs right here, right? 2018 lows already made in November, entire year this pair has been bearish. Okay. So I'd like to see some bullish momentum going into the new year, which I think is going to happen. So uh, pretty simple trade guys. Uh, we took a buy uh, on the four hour. It's consolidating pretty nicely. Um, we've got a little bit of a bull flag on the four hour right here. Um, I do think there, and I mean, there's a reason why our stop loss is all the way down here. I do think there's a possibility of it dropping down here one more time before moving up higher but I would rather take the risk and get in in case that doesn't happen. And we just see this bull flag pay off and it just breaks and just takes off without us. That's my mentality with this trade is, you know, rather than wait for that extra level of confirmation um, and get that super good risk to reward, no need to be greedy guys. You know, you just use good risk management, make sure that the current trade that we get into still has good risk to reward and good risk management and get in. Right. Um, it's all about that timing. So that's what we want. So I, I definitely recognize right here, guys, I, I, I got it. I recognize that we have a little bit of a double top forming and totally get that. So there is, um, there is with bouncing off of this, the last higher low, I'm sorry, lower high that we made um, in this major downtrend of this year. I get that. Okay. But at the same time, I also get that we had, we've had some significant buying pressure. All right, and let me, let's look at this on the daily too. You can really discuss the Wyckoff pattern of accumulation of, of understanding manipulation and bank orders in this area right here, right? Um, and it has to do with right here, here's our accumulation, right? Here's our accumulation. Here's our spring, okay? Here's, and this is where uh, what we consider high risk buys, okay? High risk buys are down here. And then we get the um, markup, a little bit of a markup right here. And markup is when the accumulation pays off and the, and the spring pays off, grabbing the liquidity and we move up higher. And now we have a little bit more of accumulation happening right here. And what I really like, what I really, really, really like is this right here. Okay. I like this dip and I like how aggressive the buyers were at pushing price back up. 
Okay. So that's why, you know, we might see the sellers step in one more time, but ultimately buyers have control in this market. And this is where the low risk, risk buys are at right now. Okay. This is the low risk buys. And I am telling you guys, like I, I can be wrong, right? Manipulation can happen. Crazy news can happen. Like whatever we could get stopped out on this trade, but from a technical standpoint and in, in understanding the epitome and the psychology of trading, which is that the history repeats itself. Okay, even though no two setups are the same, no two, two trades are the same, we understand the whole premise of trading, the whole premise of support and resistance, the whole premise and epitome of, of everything with trading is that history repeats itself, right? Let's make that, that's a fact. That is an undeniably a fact, not an opinion, okay? So this should, we should see another markup, okay? And then we're gonna get up to the 50% level. That's where our target is, the 50% retracement level. Maybe, maybe we'll see a little bit of distribution and then price pounce back down and then it starts all over again. Accumulation, spring, markup, and then we go up higher. And then we have our distribution, marked, and then we have our mark down. We have our spring marked down, right? It's, 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 if you guys don't understand the Wyckoff method, it's been around literally since the 19th century, okay? It's something that's been practiced in the charts for a long time, so it's nothing new. Okay, Richard Wyckoff, he, he, he invented or branded this in the 19th century, guys. That's in the 1800s, okay? So this is, this is <laughs> just to give you perspective and scale of how long Forex has been around. A lot of people are like, oh, like a lot of people think Forex has only been around for like, like since the beginning of, of computers and stuff like that. No, guys. Like Forex has literally been around since like King and Queen's time, guys. We're talking like, wit and I mean, we're talking, okay, remember, Declaration of Independence was signed in 1776, okay? So 1776, that's still, that's still way, that's the, that's colonial times, guys, okay? That was like, there was way, there was currency at all during that time. And King and Queens was way before that, 1400s, 1500s, guys, okay? So, so like, just put that into perspective, guys, that Forex has been around for literally hundreds and hundreds of years, okay? Not just decades, hundreds of years, centuries, okay? So just put that into in perspective, all right? Um, anyways, that's AUD USD. That's my opinion on AUD USD. NZD USD, similar setup, but I think there's better risk to reward on our AUD USD trade rather than buying um, all the way up here right now, but I'm still watching it, right? We know that these have positive correlations, right? You just look at the charts, right? Look at, look at AUD USD and NZD USD without anything on. Very similar, right? Not, not a whole lot changes. The, the longer term trend is the same with both of them, okay? Um, none of these pairs I'm interested in. USD CAD, we will begin to look for. I, I mean, I've been telling you guys we're going to be looking for some some cells, but I'm going to let things kind of be more confirmed um, going into next week. I know I'm, guys, I'm, my mark, my charts sometimes look a little wild and wacky and crazy, but that is. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna change that up just a little bit. That trend line right there a little bit. Um, I mean, things make sense to me, guys, okay? Uh, things for me make sense. What I will do, though, I'll, I'll delete this one because that doesn't make a whole lot of sense anymore. I'll delete that, too. Um, let's clean it up a little bit. Um, I mean, we, we clearly see our highs, 134, right? We, I mean, we'll, we'll keep that on there for now. No, I'll go ahead and delete that for now. Um, and then, I mean, we've got this going back. Let's see on the daily real quick. I mean, it doesn't really, we don't even really need that. Look at that. Clean it up our charts a little bit. And then this, I mean, I like this because you guys know we had possible buy zone, right? Some of you guys that are brand new here. We've been calling this for a while, right? Buy zone all the way down here. This was on September 14th, guys, two months ago. I said that that was our buy zone, right? So I'm going to, I'm definitely working guys also from a more like personal perspective of of, you know, working on my personal trading and giving out better. I mean, I think I give out fine signals, right? We profit, but I'm going to start working on these really big swings guys where we're holding them for literally months and months and months. Okay. Cause that'd be cool to have a couple trades in, you know, where we hold a trade for like three months and it's like always sitting there in profit. And then we close with like 700, 800,000 pips of profit, whatever. All right. So that's there, but I am expecting downside over the coming weeks on USD CAD. Watch this trend line, guys. Watch the watch the uh, the, the trend line on the four four hour right here. Watch this trend line. We'll see what happens. Okay. Um. 
But from a larger perspective, right, we're, we're seeing a pretty big sell-off. That probably means oil is recovering. Um, oil dropped like 30%. Holy shit, you guys. Like, that is crazy. Like, let's look at oil real quick. Do I even have oil on here? Yeah, right there. U.S. oil. Oh, yeah, it is recovering a little bit. Look at that, guys. Look at that drop in oil. Like, look at that. That's a 30% drop. Like, oh, my goodness. 23% from the highs. Actually, go, going from the high highs, basically a 30% drop we've seen in oil. Like, that's huge, guys. Like, that is manipulation to the max right there. Like, some people made some money on that. You guys know, like, yesterday, that, that guy that resigned, right, he probably called up a bunch of his boys and was like, yo, guys, I'm resigning tomorrow. Short, short the pound, right? Insider trading is a real thing with Forex, all right? Um, what is this? Euro JPY. I'm not interested in Euro JPY right now. I'm just kind of cleaning up my charts a little bit. On the daily, let's see the weekly. We've got our previous swing just to clean up stuff, just to see. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really interested in Euro JPY right now and Euro Yen. We'll look and see what happens, but uh, pretty volatile. I mean, it looks like we could go up from here potentially. Got a little bit of a double bottom, strong recovery lower here, but I'm not interested in trading this pair right now. Um, I'll keep it marked though because no, I'll actually unmark it for now. Um, Euro, holy cow, look at that Euro GBP, guys. Look at that. That is wild. That's like, look, like just, just take a second and look at this daily candle. And do you see a daily candle that is even close to the same size since what you can even see on my chart since May 10th all the way over to the left here? There's some pretty big ones, right? There's definitely some big ones like September 21st, August 29th. There's two on October 31st and November 1st, but not a single one of those is even close to the actual body length of what we saw yesterday. Huge. That's, that's wild. That is like, can't, can't predict those things, guys. But I'm still watching. We might actually be able to get a sell up in this area based off of where our, the supply zone is and look for a drop. But pound pair and Euro, is, is, Euro News is coming out tomorrow. Not interested in, in either, right? I'm going to keep it marked off because it's obviously something to recognize. If this weekly support does get around to breaking, we'll definitely be watching it. Um, there's something down here. I don't know what that is. I'll delete that. Oh, that's the gap. Oh, yeah, that gap closed for sure. Um, and, and hold on. Let, let me just kind of speak on that about gap trading for a second, guys. Imagine yourself, guys. Imagine yourself having that mentality, right? Don't, don't freaking gap trade, guys. You gap trade, you're going to lose all your money, okay? If you, if, you're, if you listen to somebody that says, oh, man, gaps always close. Yeah, they, they have a very high probability of closing, right? We can see over here, might have worked out pretty nicely, right? But like, how well does it work out right here? Are you really willing to take this much of drawdown on your account to catch just a tiny little drop? Do you guys, you guys see how terrible risk to reward that is? And it technically, like, look, even, even with this spike over here to the left, it didn't even technically close. Like, look at this. Look, look at where this is. You guys see that right there? That gap technically doesn't close. There's still a couple pips, about six pips where it didn't close. So if you're one of those people that's like, oh, I, need, I need to see blue on my account. I can't see negative. I can't take a loss. You're going you're gonna to blow your account and you're going to lose money. You're going to lose all your money if you have that mentality, right? You have to understand that losses are imminent. You have to be okay with taking a loss. That's like, the, that's like one of the first psychological barriers that you need to get through as a trader. Understand it's okay to see red on your account. It doesn't matter if you have red in your account. It matters how much of red do you see in your account, okay? So look, like you would have had to hold again all the way. Are you willing to hold all this drawdown just to wait to get your six pips? No. Nah. No, no, no. It doesn't make any sense. Don't gap trade, guys. You gap trade, you're going to lose all your money. You'll never be a successful trader gap trading. Straight up. All right? Hey, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. I'm not going to sugarcoat shit, okay? Because I don't want someone to sugarcoat shit for me and be like, oh, yeah, that's, it's easy. Like, look at this gap, guys. Look at this gap. Look at this gap on the weekly. Look at this gap. Never closed. Still is not closed to this day. I mean, your account's already blown by then, right? But, like, look at all that. Pfft. Hundreds of pips. Literally, I mean, that's a thousand pips, actually. That's literally a thousand pips <clears throat> to make what? A hundred pips? 
Is that is that worth worth holding a thousand pips of drawdown to make a hundred pips? Absolutely not, guys. Absolutely not. All right. Um, and we have CAD yen. I'm not interested in CAD yen. It's still just in this major consolidation range. Look at that bear flag. It's probably going to come down at some point, guys. It probably will, but not yet. It's not ready. Definitely not ready. So I'm actually. I mean, I'll keep it on there. I'll keep it in a different color just to just to look at it. Okay. So as of right now, guys. Best setups is looking like our AUD USD setup, and then we're gonna look for low risk buys on Euro USD next week, and low risk buys on gold next week, and low risk sells on USD Swiss franc next week. Okay, so if you have, I mean, no excuse why any of you guys don't have a trading journal or a whiteboard or something to write this stuff down on. Okay, absolutely no excuse. If you don't have anything right now, if you're that person listening to this right now, and you're just sitting here watching and you don't. Guys, there's no possible way you can be successful without writing stuff down. I write stuff down, guys. I literally went out and bought a whiteboard for me to have in Thailand. I'm probably, I can't travel with a whiteboard on my way back. So it's just going to end up, I'm going to end up having to give it away before I leave. But literally that's how much, that's how, that's how much of importance that I put on it. And if you guys aren't willing to spend, even if you do a notebook, guys, what's 99 cents? If you aren't willing to invest 99 freaking cents into your own self in a, in a 50 cent pencil to go and just write some shit down, guys, why do you think you're going in circles? Okay. I forget. It's like Einstein or something like that. But one famous guy, his definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Okay. If you're consistently blowing accounts, if you're consistently losing money and you cannot get ahead in Forex, well then it's probably something inside of your brain where you either feel like you have too much of an ego or you feel like you're just too good or you're good enough because you're really that good, huh? Like you're really doing that great that you don't need anything. Okay. So just put things into perspective, guys, be real. And if you're listening to this and you're doing all these things, guys, you are writing stuff down and you're doing all this stuff. Like I'm, this is not directed towards you guys. Okay. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, you guys know I'm a very supportive person. I'm a very positive person, but I'm also at the end of the day, I don't sugarcoat anything. Okay. I keep it real. I keep it raw. And I, and sometimes it's not what you want to hear. Right. So if this is offending you with what I'm saying, that's probably, it's probably part of the, you're probably part of the problem of why this is offending you. Okay. So just be real with yourself. Take a look in the mirror. Be like, are you doing everything you possibly can to be successful? And if the quite, and if the answer to that is no, you aren't taking notes, you aren't writing things, you aren't reviewing your week, you aren't doing everything you, you aren't watching the daily webinars consistently. You aren't doing this. You aren't doing that. Guys, it's something inside yourself that, that needs to be changed. Okay. And if you are watching this and you are being on the webinars every single day and you are following proper risk management, you're probably seeing success. You're probably, it's probably, you're probably having those aha moments. You're probably having those light bulb moments and you're seeing some success in the markets. Even if it's a little bit of success, progress is progress guys. 95% of traders don't even make money long-term. So if you're already at that point of break even, or even just making a little bit of money at the end of each month or at the end of each year, you are better than 95% of the people that are in the market. And the only thing you have to do is scale that over time. Okay. It is, is allow your account to compound and grow and grow the same way I did guys. Okay. So that is it. Um, Kevin says indicators out of confluence. That's all should not be the primary reason for taking a trade. Absolutely. Never take a trade just based off of what one indicator, a couple indicators tell you let price action be the reason why you take trades and let the indicators add confluence to the reason you're trading, you're taking that trade. Okay. So that's it guys. Write down on your whiteboard, your trading journal, whatever you've got. Uh, next week we're looking for Euro USD buys. We are um, maybe even looking at scaling in on our AUD USD trade, um, taking a potential buy on another buy on gold, getting back into that trade. And then Euro, and then USD Swiss franc, potentially some lows, but Euro USD, USD Swiss franc, AUD USD, those look the best. Gold is really volatile. So we'll be careful with gold. But other than that, guys, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. This has been great. I see some new people on here. Um, let's just keep grinding guys. Uh, this was an awesome week. We're already up on our accounts, guys. The month is halfway over as of right now, and we are already at our target. We aim for 5% returns a month, and we're at 4.5%. We were at we were at 5.5% yesterday, but we lost that 1% on our GJ trade. But still, for the month, we are up 4.5%. So we are killing it this month, guys. And I really want to keep this momentum, and it's going to stay here, and we're going to keep going into 2019. The course is going to be done December 1st. I'm so excited to share that stuff with you guys. And that's it guys. Um, I have so much energy cause I just slept 13 hours. So 
Um, I have some videos to keep doing, um, some emails and stuff to get back to. But if you have any questions, guys, feel free to reach out to me on social media. I will get back to you as soon as possible. Other than that, guys, Sunday, weekly outlook, free weekly outlook. It is now streaming on YouTube. Okay, guys, we stream the weekly outlook on YouTube now. It's a YouTube live. So if you are not subscribed, go to YouTube and, and, uh, uh, search positive traders. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you hit the little bell and turn on your notifications. So that way you do not miss when I go live, guys. Okay. Um, other than that, I appreciate you guys and I'm glad you guys have. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great webinar. Awesome. Guys, thank you guys. I really appreciate you guys' support literally from the bottom of my heart. It means so much your guys' support and you guys, you know, are, are really what keep me going and keep me focused and, and wanting to, you know, my, I'm, I'm just as committed to your guys' success as hopefully you guys are. So, um, have a great rest. Have a great weekend guys. Relax a little bit. Spend some time with your family. You know, it's not always about the charts, you know, definitely take a breather. You need, you need some, some away time. Sometimes you need some time to breathe and, 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 and chill. Cause I know trading can be very intense sometimes. Okay. So have a relaxing weekend. I'll see you guys all on Sunday and have a great weekend guys. Take care.